This is Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Thanks for joining me. Today I'll be answering a question regarding Dell servers. This is going to be useful for Dells ranging from the 400, 600, 700 uh, series. So things like the R620, such as the one that I'm using here, um, all the way to you know T620 would be the same thing, except in the tower form instead of a rack mount. And we're specifically going to be addressing the perk h7 uh, series so you know 710 720 730s that may be found in those different generations of dell servers now specifically we'll be looking at the log files to see if we're detecting corruption degradation anything wrong with the drives so if you're suspecting something wrong with your disks this is the way to do it so first foremost we're going to go ahead and click on the manage so I'm inside of the VMware ESXi web interface here and we've got to make sure that this SSH service is running now keep in mind that we want it running specifically right now for this task if it's not being used turn it off uh, the, the more things that are off the more secure your server will be so I'm going to go ahead and start this now second let me give you a bit of a grasp here of, of what we have so I've got basically two data stores I've got an SAS 300 and I've got one called data store zero and we'll be seeing these shortly now what I've done is I've gone ahead and downloaded a product called win SPC which is from this website here and it allows me to transfer files pretty easily and Dell was kind enough to supply me with let me find it here with a script which is called perk log sh which I then went and downloaded to one of my data stores actually my data store is zero so I just basically grabbed it copied it over when you want to go and connect let me show you here if I want to create a new session basically this is what it looks like and what the way you connect to it so you go and click SCP type in the IP address of your server in this case I'm already connected here the username and the password username you would use using your root account and your password is the same as your VMware and at that point you will end up with this uh, look and feel where you can transfer things back and forth between the VMware's disks and your local machine now having done that we're going to want to go look at another tool which is called putty so we're going to use the official one and putty the way you're going to download is simply go to the website click on download and you want this putty.exe if you're using windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 so i'm going to go ahead and launch that for you and show you what it's going to look like Okay, so let's put this away now we need to connect to our server so just like we did for the win SCP we're gonna go ahead and type in our IP address of the server now this will fail if your SSH is not enabled by the way in case you hadn't thought of that so click go ahead and click open and you'll get a wonderful little black box here again you're logging in as root we're gonna put in the password that was set for the ESXi server press enter and here we are now first things first we need to go to where I put in that file so we're gonna go ahead and do CD and it's under VMFS it's gonna be under volumes with an S and the name of your data store now if you don't know what the name of your data store you could actually just press enter do LS it'll show you what's in here so as you may remember mine is called data store zero so in this case I could proceed to do another CD data store 
zero. Keep in mind too that if you name something with a capital D, for example, in data store, then you'll need to do a capital letter there as well since it is sensitive. So we're going to go ahead now and create the log and it's sh and then we're going to call our little script here which is perk log.sh and by default if I just leave it at that press enter it's going to go into a temp so temp perk and it's going to give it today's date Okay, so you may have to press the refresh button here to see it. So here it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this back over so that I can manipulate it and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now that's a lot of information. And one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and do a search. And you're going to look for things like degraded. And that should start to give you some indication as to whether or not you're having problems with some of the drives. Let me go ahead and pull up one that we had that actually had some disk problems. So this one here, and we're going to go ahead and do a find, the graded, and you're going to see a lot of information based on things like battery and let's see if we can find, so a critical description. There's a lot of information in here. Okay, so I went too far. All right, so part of the challenge in here is sorting out what you're looking at. Now, you're going to find that things do switch from a state of degraded whoops, back to optimal. And you're going to find physical IDs, you're going to find where the enclosures are, you're going to find a lot of information. There are also dates in here. Uh, again, it's a matter of scanning through the environment. See, there's a timestamp there. You can see a date. So it starts to give you some idea. Of course, at all times, you should be going through VMware. You may be seeing uh, things like legacy, uh, I just said legacy, latency issues where it's telling you that the disk is not responsive for X number of milliseconds. That's usually an indication that you have a degraded drive. Occasionally, the drive does not report itself as having issues, and that becomes a problem. So you can use this uh, to collect the logs and to analyze it and go take a look at it. Now, there, I know there are some uh, external code out there, little scripts that will format this in a better manner for you. Uh, so far, I've been able to find things relative is simply just by doing searches. Uh, things that I look for would be things like uh, predicted. So if you do predictive failure, see this would tell me right now that potentially this drive, my drive 04, which by the way would be the fifth drive, if you're counting the number of drives that you have, we start at one, the computer starts at zero. So PD04 would be the fifth drive in this case. And the other thing that I like to do is when I'm about to remove a drive to replace it, I do uh, force the controller to blink it just so that I'm double sure that I'm doing the right one. And you could also look for, uh, for example, puncture, P-U-N-C. Um, puncture is a state where you have some errors on one drive that have been replicated which is not a good thing. So this one doesn't have any other messages regarding puncture. 
So that's it in a nutshell. I hope this helped someone out there. And please, if you have any questions, uh, contact us. And be sure to subscribe or like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for your time.